Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Automate with Pius. So in this video, I am going to demonstrate the third bot of Bots TNA website, which is the Notary Services. So let's quickly jump on to the requirements of this bot. So the requirement is very simple. The bot should come over here onto this website and download this apadvocates.xlsx file. Now I have already downloaded it. So as you can see over here. So this is the Excel file that bot is going to work on. Now what bot is supposed to do is fetch the notary advocate name. Let's say this is Guru Belly Krishna Rao. I am going to copy this and go back over here. Now I will fill the notary uh, advocate name over here. Then I need area of practice. So that will come from C column. So I will just simply copy this. And going back over here, pasting like this. Then district is Vizinagram. So I will, the bot will know the district from this line. Like over here, all these 15 entries are for Vizinagram district. And the, these below entries are for Vishaka Patnam. Similarly, East Godavari and West Godavari. So for this, since the district is Vizinagram, so I will jump over here. And from this drop down, I am selecting Vizinagram district. Then click on Submit Notary. Once this loads up, a transaction number is provided that is supposed to be copied and pasted back into the Excel against that particular advocate. So I will just clear this formatting. Oh, sorry. It should be clear format. Yeah. So that is how the one transaction of this particular process will be. And now the bot is just supposed to process all these entries. Now for the demonstration purpose, I have reduced the number of transactions that bot is going to do. So for that, you can see this Excel file. Give me a moment. So this is a dummy data I have created based on this actual data. So what I have done is basically I have reduced the number of entries per district to two or three entries only. And let's remove these transaction numbers. So it will be what bot will be feeling something like this. Okay, so now let's go through the source code first and understand how bot is working on this. So I will just uh, again open the input file. So first of all, what we are doing in the code is we have we have created an initialize uh, assign. Okay, so basically in this multiple assign, we are going to create four variables, which are the required uh, details, like from where I need to download the file to get this URL, you can simply go to that website, right click on this XLSX file and copy the link. Okay, once you copy it, paste it over here, then the download file path, which file I am, what is going to be the name of file that I want to download, sheet name, like from this Excel file, we can get notice area of practice and input file path. So over here, I am getting two variables, download file path and input file path. That is just for the uh, sake of demo, because during demo, I have reduced the number of transactions. In actual development, your download file path and input file path will be exactly same. Now, in this process, we are going to use Chrome. So I am filling the Chrome in, in before starting the work. Then removing old downloaded file. So for this delete, uh, you need to make sure to click this continue on error property. That way, if like for example, right now there is this downloaded file is not present over here. So this delete activity will not give us any error. And in case that file would have been present, it would have simply deleted it. Then here I am using modern activities again. So first is use application app or browser in which we are opening the notaries website here few things you need to make sure is your close should be always input mode as simulate and open as always and resize the window to maximize so that bot is able to properly work do its work then if you would have seen the previous two videos how we downloaded the input excel file from the website similarly we are using an http request to get this HTTP request, you will need a UiPath.WebAPI activities package, which is right over here in the manage packages. 
if it is not visible in your uh, these dependencies simply go to the all packages search for the package name and install it now let's go back so for http request things that we need to configure the request method should be get request url would be your input file url which we have already initialized at the top and this resource path resource path will be your download file path since um, when, when you are developing the bot your input file path and download file path will be the same so just make sure that you keep them configured properly once the file is downloaded this activity will download the file we will use the workbook activity to read that file with the sheet name and saving the data in dt underscore notary services data then a log message which shows that how many records are there to be processed now here comes the main core part of this bot so the only core concept that needs to be understand while developing is how bot is going to understand on which district it is working on because here all the cells have been merged a b and c similarly over here as well so the thing is even though if you merge multiple cells all together bot will read the data from the cell value from the first cell like over here vijayanagaram district even though it, from a human's eye, eye view it would look like it is a2 b2 and c2 three cells are merged but in actual the value is stored in the a2 cell only so what bot needs to do it needs to check the first column only if it has some value or not and to understand if it is a district value or a advocate entry the difference is how it is going to do is to check if this a serial number or it is a keyword so if it is a number the value over here then that would be an it is an advocate entry else it would have been the district name so that's what we have implemented over here <clears throat> initially i am putting district as string.md using a for each loop with taking out the row index variable so we know that on which row bot is currently working on then if there is a change in district like not current row 0 or 2 string is numeric if it is not numeric then that means that is a district name if it is numeric that means that is an advocate entry so if this condition is true bot is going to update the district variable with the current row value 0 or 2 string and continue to the next transaction so like bot comes over here on a2 cell it says oh it's a visiting name district i'm updating the district variable in my memory and then simply jump on to the next one okay then once this if condition is over now say it is a integer value so this if condition will be false then it is simply going to the website here i have used a type into activity from the modern modern UI automation activities, this type row value will be current row one dot two string. One means column number D. And here the input mode should be same as app or browser. You need to make sure that the selectors that you are going to create are proper. So, like for example, here I have got taken two things: this notary advocate name as an anchor. So if you see it's a strict selector, I'm using AA name attribute, which is more reliable to identify that. And for the particular field here, the strict selector here also, I'm using row name as no, uh, notary advocate name. So that is going to define that th in this particular row, I am want to fill up this field. Similarly, area of practice, current row 2.2 two string, all things are same input method as same as app browser and uh, here is our strict selector for this row name as area of practice and anchor also as a name with area of practice then district now in district we, what we need to do since in every district name dist is coming but whereas on screen when we see it's just the actual name not dist is not written anywhere so we are simply using district dot replace list with string dot empty or just a two double quotes which represents an empty string and then trim for any kind of space that we might be getting from the exam and finally click on submit put a delay of two seconds just for that loading part and then check if the transaction number element is visible or not if it is visible fetch the transaction number 
else put in any in the transaction number variable that way this transaction number will always have some kind of value and it won't be a nothing finally to update back into the excel here i am using a workbook write cell activity i have passed the input file path the sheet name the transaction number with the trim and the cell address so cell address will be d plus row index plus 2 dot 2 string so the logic is for row indexes it will always start with zero when iterating using a for each loop so let's say what is over here on this entry so at this time row index value would be zero now if i want to enter something onto this cell i need to add plus two so that is zero plus two similarly if i am on this entry entry number four so at this time it would be the row index value will be zero one two two so i need to add plus two more two so that the cell address will be d4 so that's how we have added over here d plus row index plus two and then dot two string finally once we get the transaction number we are simply click uh, going back to the previous page and fetching the new details so that is the entire end-to-end -end workflow now let's see how it works in running i will just close this file i don't need this one as well and this bot is going to work on chrome so let's just go and click on run file Okay, let's wait for the bot to come up. Okay, so bot has started. Now it is going to the web page. It should be downloading the file in backend, completely background. And uh, okay, so now it has started entering the value. And since we have done all this automation in the background, so even if I click on UI path, search anything, check out anything, it won't be creating any issue for the bot. Even if we click on refresh, here we can see this is the download file path that bot is able to download the file. And if we see the output panel, here it says that total records should be processed of 40, means there are total 40 entries in the data table, excluding the headers and currently it is working on east Gutavri district so let's wait for the bot to complete its work oh by the way guys still i'm waiting just please like share and subscribe to my channel for more videos and if you like my video or you need any kind of help from me just let let me know in the comment section or you can directly reach out to me on my linkedin account which is uh, you can search me out uh, with pushagarwal08 right there such as linkedin.com slash in slash pushagarwal08 and if you want to reach out to me on gmail you can uh, simply search um, send me an email on pushagarwal.0108 at the gmail.com and oh by the way yeah now nevertheless if you want this bot it's it will be completely available on my github profile as well so i will just make sure to put the link to that github in the description of this video so you can download this bot from there if you want and just let me know your views how you like if you like my channel and if there is any particular other video that you would like on it so on which it is pleased to choose still It is still way away from completing. The last district should be, I guess, done by government.
oh we are at the end of this uh, process finally i guess this should be the last entry oh sir awesome so bot has finally completed the transaction let's say i guess it must have took 3 minutes around yeah so it took around 3 30 minutes 30 seconds to complete this demo if you would be using the actual input file it is going to take a lot more the only reason behind that is the ui automation okay so let's see the output of the export yep perfectly done so bot has finally got all the transaction numbers for each district okay hope you guys like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching